Hey, what's going on, everyone? It is B. Avery here, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Just My Opinion, another episode of the box office. I'm going to title this video, The Stupidest Release Schedule in the World. Oh, my goodness gracious, I feel so passionate about that. You already know why. Solo, a Star Wars story, did not come remotely close to what they projected, to what the tracking is. I mean, uh, there's just so many things going on wrong with this film as to why it did not reach the mark that they wanted. I mean, it was reported that, you know, Star Wars or Solo has double Black Panther in, you know, uh, pre-sale tickets and Solo is going to reach 150 million, 175 million and blah, 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 bull crap. Um, this film did not do well at all. I saw the film. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you can go back and check out my review. I did enjoy the film. Um, I didn't love it. There's a lot of people crapping on it, but I think that's a lot of the critics. But at the same time, it had like an A minus cinema score. So, I mean, there's just like a lot of factors. Um, I've been I've been screaming since like last October, November. I even made a video saying is Disney and Fox stupid or are they insane or something like that because I just don't understand this release schedule. But uh, there's more to why Solo did not do well um, at the box office besides the release schedule. Um, there's some stuff that I don't even think about overseas as well as the worldwide box office. And we're going to get into that. But. Before we get into all the details, let's just go ahead and look at uh, the top five or the top 10 or whatever I want to look at for uh, Memorial Day weekend that just passed this week. I did a short little video, excuse me, on Monday, uh, but I'm just now coming back to you on Thursday because um, I wanted to wait for the actuals. But coming in and, and it's late news now, but how, how well coming in at number one was Solo a Star Wars story bringing in. $84 million, $84,420,489 million at 4,381 locations. Now, $85, $84 million for um, a three-day opening weekend is not bad for a film, but when you project it, it's so high. And with this being a Star Wars film, and then all of those are making at least $100 million and just so many factors, I mean, it, this should have made more. For the four-day weekend, it did make one hundred and three million, but that's the four-day. It's not three-day. That's including, um, you know, Monday. Coming in at number two is uh, Deadpool. For the three-day weekend, making forty-three million dollars, it had a sixty-five percent drop. Um, now, a six that is a lot, but we have to give context to it because if a film drops sixty percent, seventy percent from weekend one to weekend two. Okay, if it made a freak effing ton the first weekend, like Infinity War did, two hundred and fifty-seven million. It's okay if it drops a lot the second weekend because most of the people saw it the first weekend. Well, Deadpool kind of fell below expectations as uh, as far as money and quality is concerned. Um, you know, the the first film opened with one hundred and thirty-two. Second film opened with one twenty-five, and. Uh, you know, the first film drop was 57%. Uh, the second film is uh, 65%. Second weekend for Deadpool 1 was 56 million. Deadpool 2 is uh, 43 million, like I just said. That's a difference of around 12, 13 uh, million dollars. They may not seem a lot, but, you know, that is a lot over the run of the, over the theatrical run. So, um, Solo and Deadpool, I did not do a spoiler review for it. But to be honest, guys, I don't think that I am because I just don't care enough to see it. Like, I'm not going to I'm going to when I do videos, I have to be passionate about it. Every once in a while, I'll do a video if somebody asks me to do it. But I don't want to get into the thing of just doing stuff when people want me to do it, because that's why people get burnt out and they abandon their channels for months at a time. It's happened to me in the past. So I'm not sure that a spoiler review will come for those two films if they do it'll just be a surprise coming in at number three is avengers infinity war dropping another 41 percent at 17 million dollars it is now in 3700 theaters book club coming in at number four at 10 million dollars and that film is doing um pretty well i think i don't know what the budget was for book club i can look it up real quick um let's see here because it's staying in the top five, and this is what, it's third release, I mean, third weekend release, 
no, it's his second week. So, excuse me. I'm thinking this is the third or fourth week, but my bad, y'all. But I'm still very curious on what the um, the budget would be for a book club. And the budget was $10 million. So, and it's already at $37 uh, million. Um, no, 30, 38 million, finna be 39 million. It's only a couple few thousand away from 39 million. So that's making money. That's, it's well into profit land now. Life of the Party, which I will be watching this weekend and hopefully reviewing, uh, came in at number five, uh, with another $5 million. And Breaking In with Gabrielle Union is coming in at number six, kind of right there behind, um, Life of the Party. Both of those debuted during, uh, not Memorial Day, but Mother's Day weekend. Breaking In was a very bland film, but I, I was still very entertained by it. Right now, worldwide, it is at $40 million. The budget was only $6 million uh, by James McTeague. So that's well into profit land right there. You know, my rule of three is three times the budget. It would have been $18 million, and it's already past that. So good uh, good ups to you, Gabrielle Union. I am a fan of yours, Pretty Lady. Coming in at number seven is Show Dogs with another $3 million. Overlord is coming in at number eight with three, another three million. A Quiet Place is still in the top ten with two million dollars. This is in the, it's been in theaters for uh, two months now, eight weeks. It's in this eight week, another two million dollars. The budget for that film was seventeen million worldwide. It is at three hundred and fourteen million dollars. That is freaking insane. Uh, John Krasinski and Paramount, great job, guys. Uh, hopefully we can get Emily Blunt and John Krasinski to be uh, Mr. and Mrs. Fantastic and Fantastic Four. Hopefully when the Fox and the Marvel Disney merger happens, if it's approved and, you know, we get all that good stuff. I would love to see them as in the Fantastic Four. Coming in at number 10 is our uh, BG at uh, 1.2 million. Now we are out of the top uh, 10, but there's just still some films that I'm concerned about. Uh, of course, like Black Panther, you know, we're going to talk about that. Um. Yeah, that's old. Now, Rampage with the Rock, the Wayne the Rock Johnson. That is at four hundred and thirteen million dollars worldwide. Worldwide right now, domestically, it didn't hit. Uh, it did not hit a hundred million. It's at ninety four million dollars right now. I don't think that it is going to make uh that hundred million dollars. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. I'm sorry, guys. Domestically, uh, yeah, it's it's not gonna. I seriously doubt it's going to do that. But the, unless they spend a stupid amount of money on marketing uh, outside of the norm, it is doing very well. Well, no, it's, it's doing well. It, it, it did what it needed to do. It did enough to warrant a sequel. I would not shoot the budget up that much higher. Uh, but, you know, I enjoyed the film. I enjoyed it enough to where I, I'm, I'm going to buy it when it when it comes out. Um, there's just some scenes in that movie that I can't wait to see again. Um, Amy Schumer has no pull. Um, and Black Panther, baby. Let's talk about Black Panther real quick. Worldwide, right now, one billion three hundred forty-five million. That's great. Ah, man. Domestically, I'm just not sure it is going to hit the seven hundred million. I don't know. Right now, it is six hundred and ninety-eight million dollars. So, let me get my calculator real quick. I just want to see what exactly it needs to be a little, little more than 1 million, but I just want to be exact, exact, exact. Okay. 700 million minus 698, 838, 368. It just needs $1,161,632 to reach the $700 million dollar uh, milestone domestically and with the film bringing in uh, another where are you at 481 million dollars I said 481 million 481 thousand dollars I don't know I mean maybe if it's in theaters another month maybe it'll reach it I don't know but I'm gonna be singing and dancing yes even though the money is not going to black people uh, if it reaches that amount of money right there. Uh, Shoot the Dare is just another thing that stood out to me. Um, if you're watching this video, I just posted my review for um, Upgrade, which is done by Blumhouse. And I forgot to mention her in uh, my review. I'm going to mention her now. Betty Gabriel. 
Uh, you were in Upgrade. You were in the. You was in Get Out and also Purge the Election Year. You did a fantastic job in the movie, ma'am. Um, sorry that I did not put that in the review. I just forgot and I have it right here. But I brought up Truth or Dare because Upgrade is Blumhouse. Truth or Dare is Blumhouse. And so their budget for Truth or Dare was three point five million dollars, and right now say eighty two million worldwide. I mean they can't lose. They're gonna make money just by default, just by accident. I mean, if you make a movie that cheap and you just put it in enough theaters, people are gonna be like, hmm, I wonder what that's about. You know, even if the movie is garbage, it's it's, it's I'm not hating on them, but it's not fair. I mean, it is fair. I'm, I'm joking, but. You know, guys, that right there is the number, um, the number ten uh, box office, and a little bit more um, for the four-day weekend. Deadpool did fifty-three million. Infinity War did twenty-two million. Now, I am not entirely sure what the budget was for Star Wars, a uh, solo Star Wars film. I believe it was around $300 million. Whoa, B, why was it so much? Well, because, um, you know, Lord and Miller, they got fired on the job. They had to bring in um, Ron Howard. He reshot over 80% of the film. If you're going to, sh- I mean, you're really just making the movie over again. So, um, you know, the marketing was super high. I mean, this is probably overall like a four to $500 million budget, including the marketing. Um, if I'm wrong there, please let me know respectfully in the comment section below. But this movie is going to lose this this movie. I mean, this movie is going to lose money. I don't see how it's remotely close going to do well um, in, in any sense. I mean, you know, the opening for The Force Awakens was $245 million. Rogue One was $200 million. Star Wars The Last Jedi was $200 million. No, two, I can't talk, guys. Okay, the budget. Wait, wait, am I talking about the budget or the opening? Excuse me, I'm all over the place. <clears throat> the budget for Star Wars: The Force Awakens was two forty five. Rogue One was two hundred million, and uh, I believe it was like two hundred and fifty for the Last Jedi. And Solo Star Wars movie is well uh, above all of those. And this is the weakest film. I mean, I mean, just like people are saying, this is a perfect storm. Why? Well, nobody care to see a solo movie, okay? Um, I don't. They announce a Boba Fett movie. I don't care to see that. I, I want to see a Obi One movie, but nobody cared to see it. Another thing is Star Wars. I mean, another thing we just had a Star Wars movie uh, in December, and so you want to give us another one already in May? I mean, that's just too close. The first time we had Star Wars movies, it was three films over like a six year period in the seventies and eighties. And then in the early 2000, 99, 2000s, we got three more films. Now, uh, since 2015, uh, we're in our fourth film. So that's just too much right there. Spread it out. Uh, we just had a Star Wars film, The Last Jedi, but now we get another one. A lot of people did not like The Last Jedi, too. The film is very divisive. And so, you know, like people just like, no, you know what? I don't like where Star Wars is going. I'm not going to see Solo. Plus, this is a movie I don't even want to see. I mean, I, I don't I don't blame them there. So you have that factor as well. You got people saying they're going to boycott it. And to be honest with you guys, I'm like I said, I'm a Star Wars fan, but I'm currently I am not satisfied or happy with what they're doing with Star Wars. I don't care either because I'm just not like I want to see more Star Wars films. OK, but if they say, OK, solo Star Wars film with solo Star Wars movie, that's the last Star Wars movie. I'm like, really? OK. And I will not lose any sleep. Now, if they said, hey, we getting away, we doing away with, you know, no more comic book movies or no more Marvel movies, then I would throw a fit, you know, but that's just, you know, my taste. But I'm not I'm not satisfied because, I mean, with The Force Awakens, I, it copied too much of episode four. Uh, The Last Jedi come on man what what they did with some of the characters it was boring that casino scene was whack there was just a lot of things that we just didn't get to see and that that film reminded me of the whole original trilogy I love Rogue One that was fantastic and you know um, Solo Star Wars story you know that was that was good but I said I liked the two anthology films more than the episodic films so there you go there but then uh, I was watching Screen Junkies and Darren Merle. He was talking about this. Solo did not do that well overseas as well. Um, I mean, it's been released in majority of its territories. Let me, uh, let me, God, lead is, I'm sorry, guys. I, I cannot, I cannot see that well. And my cursor always disappears 
from him. But let me try to look at the release dates worldwide for Solo to see how many other territories it opened up in. I believe it opened up in China already too, uh, to the sum of around ten million dollars, which sucks. Um, oh, it opened everywhere. It's yeah. The only other places that haven't opened is Croatia, which opened up today, and then Japan, June 29th. So yeah, it, it's opened everywhere. Man, that sucks. So let me just go to Solo real quick and look at the foreign. Well, let me click summary real quick first. I mean, it, right now it's at 170, uh, 197 million, 197 million dollars worldwide. Only 82 million dollars foreign. That's effing horrible, man. Like, damn. And then you got China over here. You no, know, yeah, it, it said nine million, nine million eight hundred dollars, nine million eight hundred thousand. Let me go to the numbers real quick. That website because they're a little bit uh, up to date as far as the numbers are concerned. Uh, let's see here. Uh, where you at? Okay, solo Star Wars. Uh, international. Here we go. So China. Okay, see, see, Box Office Mojo has the China uh, numbers at nine million dollars, nine million eight hundred fifty-three thousand. But um, the numbers is a little more up to date with the foreign releases. They have China at eleven million dollars. 11 million 360 then you're 90 kingdom and 10 million so this just sucks this movie is gonna lose money I, i'm i don't i don't want it to but i mean that's just the reality of it okay i mean there's just no excuse me there's just no other way around it uh i mean box office mojo they have these comparison things for all the star wars movies there's no point in going over that so i'm not and you know the same thing with deadpool too you know uh Deadpool is even outpacing. Okay, now this week, this past week, it is outpacing the first Deadpool, but barely by like a few dollars. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but Disney so far this year <clears throat> has had four films. If they had more than that, let me know in the comments. They've had uh, A Wrinkle in Time. Of course, they had Black Panther. They had Solo and Avengers Infinity War. And they're two for two. They had two hits and two mega flops. Uh, Wrinkle in Time and the Solo are flopping, and Infinity War and Black Panther are doing great. So, you know, I don't know, Disney. I think I saw somewhere to where their budget for films is five, or I think it's just the film entertainment industry. I mean, I think it's like $4.9 billion. I, I have to verify that. Uh, you know, for all of the films, all, all movie entertainment things, I, I have to double check on that. But. You know, Black Panther and Infinity War is doing great, but uh, Wrinkle in Time and Solo are not. I believe the next Disney film is the Pixar film, which is uh, Incredibles 2, which came, comes out um, next uh, month or a couple of weeks from, yeah, well, June is tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be rewatching Incredibles 1 on Blu-ray because it's just a great film. Um, <clears throat> I've been talking about these release schedules for Solo and how stupid they are. Um, I mean, Disney cannot control what Fox is doing, but they can control what Solo was doing. People were saying that they should have put Solo in uh, in December. That would have been a horrible idea, and I do not agree with that at all because it is just too stacked. But they should have put it in August. So let's just look real quick um, at the release schedule for August of 2018. So August 3rd, you have Christopher Robin and The Darkest Minds. And... August 10th, you have The Meg, um, A Prayer Before Dawn. Got to check that out. The Black's Klansman. August 17th, you have Happy Time Murders. And I think there was like a big release in August. Um, No. Wait, I think in... When does... Uh, when does... Uh, what should call it come out? Uh, uh, not uh, Mission Impossible. So, yeah, Mission Impossible comes out July 27th. Okay. So, of course, you don't. So, got my calendar here. Uh, let's go to July. So, yeah, July 27th. So, at the earliest, you would want to release um, a film, you know, two weeks. But 
after any other major blockbuster. But you don't even got to do that, man. You, so I said that July 27th, there is nothing n- like, and you don't want it. Well, Meg is not going to be no contender. You could have released Solo the last week of August, man. Like, seriously, you could have released it the week after Slender Man, and you would have had no competition or like the first week of September. There's nothing there for you to compete with. Plus, it's a movie that nobody wanted to see. Uh, you had so many problems behind the scenes with reshooting, and that just could have gave you an extra three months to work on the film. You know what I'm saying? And guys, they these studios and these uh, visual effect houses, they be working on these films at the last minute. Sometimes they don't get they don't get certain like visual effects turned in until like a week before the film is released. Sometimes days and hours. You know, like one one of the things that I really learned a lot about film growing up is just the special features on DVDs. All the behind the scenes and listen to the commentary, they release a lot of information on those. I mean, that's not the only place, but, you know, just sometimes like, yeah, you see this effect here. You know, we didn't finish this until three days before the deadline. So it just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, so Avengers Infinity War was going to be the first, well, May 4th, but they brought it up a week. Deadpool 2 could have been pushed back. It was really supposed to be June 1st, but then they moved it to May 18th. Then they, uh, uh, yeah, it was May 18th. They should have pushed Deadpool to Memorial Day weekend. That would have put Deadpool 2 and Infinity War exactly four weeks apart. Fox always used to take the Memorial Day weekend anyway. And then put Solo in August. I mean, more marketing. We didn't even get to see a trailer into the Super Bowl. I mean, it's just a, it's just this is stupid, guys. Uh, this is dumb. They're, they're dumb for doing that. They're stupid. They're stupid, stupid, stupid. But anyway, last but not least... I always talk about the showdown between Black Panther and Infinity War and all that, you know, the day to day. So right now, actually, let me go up real quick. So while uh, Avengers Infinity War made uh, seventeen million dollars this past weekend, uh, Black Panther in this fifth weekend made twenty six million, and so next weekend Black Panther made seventeen million, which is what. Uh, I'm sorry. In the six, in Black Panther's sixth weekend, it made seventeen million dollars. Uh, Infinity War made that in its fifth fifth weekend, and you know, I just you know, um, it may be a missed opportunity. I, I'm not gonna call Disney stupid or Marvel stupid for not putting more Black Panther in uh, Avengers Infinity War. I bet they're kind of kicking themselves in the in the in the uh, or kicking rocks right now, kicking themselves in the butt now. If they don't put more Black Panther and Wakanda in Avengers Four, y'all are dumb. Uh, you should should the uh, they're doing reshoots in the fall reshoots are normal that doesn't mean the film sucks or anything like that and just going like the day to day with uh, Black Panther and Infinity War since both of those are in theaters right now uh, Wednesday Black Panther won again 2 million versus Infinity Wars 1.4 Tuesday Black Panther won 2.8 uh, compared to Infinity Wars 1.9 I mean right now Black I mean Infinity War is still winning you know, at this point with a total of 631 million domestically versus uh, uh, Black Panther 612, but it's going to catch it. You know, I don't think I think maybe Infinity War is going to top out maybe at um, maybe 675 or something like that domestically. You know, uh, if it don't get to six, it'll get to 650. I'll be very, very disappointed um, as far as the worldwide is concerned. Overall. All time world. Let's do uh, domestic first. Black Panther is number three. Avengers: Infinity War is number six. Adjusting for inflation, I think Black Panther is still gonna be number thirty. Yep. Infinity War is number forty-one. And worldwide, right now, uh, Avengers: Infinity War is number four. Uh, the Force Awakens is uh, is number three. Black Panther is at number nine. So out of the top 10 worldwide of all time, one, two, three, four are Marvel Disney films. And so, you know, but guys, there you have it. That is just my box office rundown for the Memorial Day weekend covering Solo, Infinity War, Deadpool 2, and a number of other films. Uh, You know, I'm very disappointed of the release schedule. Also, I brought up something um, like there was a big sporting event overseas, like one of the biggest sporting events in the world, because apparently the Super Bowl is not the biggest event that's just in the world. They just kind of make that lie up to, um, you know, I guess 
get more viewers. But um, that was another reason why Solo didn't do so well overseas uh, this past weekend. But guys, um, I said all that, but that is just my opinion for the box office rundown. What did you think? Did I leave anything out? You know, did I turn you on? Did I turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine, but you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of your screen, and I made it very easy by providing a link to all the good stuff there in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review slash recap of, you know, the box office rundown for Memorial Day weekend. And before you go, don't forget, then my name is Brandon Kidavery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.